delayed, delete them, try creating a new, uh-oh. Um, take it back, hold on. All right, I'm gonna bring you back in because it's it's asking something. Um, why are we not wanting holds? Is it with the music? No, it's it's something, no, it's not. You're live on, oh, we're actually live right now on two of them. I don't know where, <clears throat> we're gonna run with it. I think one of the things, so Ken, we just blew the intro. We're actually live right now. So. <laughs> Hey, I'm baby, live television. That's how we do. It's actually, what one of my um, one of the um, yeah, whatever. All right, this is a great professional start. No, one of the this goes out to several of my groups, and and my one group, it's not showing that it would live to it, but that's okay because as soon as we're done, I will uh, uh pump it out uh, or or cut and paste it. So okay. we'll have um, <clears throat> we'll have this will be seen an hour delayed. Uh, probably because of my technical errors. But anyways, hey, welcome to the backstory. This is a special edition. Um, normally we do Thursday night and we're going to have Ken back on tomorrow. So I'm already saying goodbye to you before I even introduce you. But <laughs> tomorrow night at um, uh, nine o'clock, our usual time, Peggy and I do the backstory and Ken is going to be uh, our guest to talk about his book, uh, Bamboozled. You know what I got to say about the name? First off, welcome, Ken. How you doing? Good, man. Good, good. Happy hump day to you. Hump day. Well, I, 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 I'll get to why you're here because uh, I need to hear from you. But what's funny is you know, there's always uh, the backstory, which stands for blood alcohol content. There's always the catchy names. And, and then I saw your book, Bamboozled. And I thought, oh, there's one I missed. And he snagged it just in time. So that was a good, a good catch on your part because there's only so many words that have booze in them. Um, I, I was I was using the phrase "sorry, booze, you lose." You know, I even mm. I, that was my little catch at the beginning. But there's only so many things. I thought, wow, good. You know, where I don't know if you were in the bathtub and and a, a, an apple dropped on your head, but where you came up with bamboozled is huge. Dude, I will tell you, I was actually talking to uh, Amy and Matt from, from Alcohol Free um, Marriage yesterday. Uh, we had a podcast with those guys, and they asked me about it, and I was, and they said, "Where did Matt ask me where did the idea come from?" And I'm not joking, Jeff. A year and a half ago, my wife and I were in the car, we were driving, and I, and I had told her that I was going to write a book, and I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about ideas, and when you say an apple hit me on the head, it just, it came out of nowhere, and I was like, bamboozled, and this is like how, because it was, my thought process was how alcohol tells you something that you're believing, but it's a lie if you under, if you really look at the truth of it. Right. And and then I thought about that word with booze to your point. Oh, yeah. And I was like, holy schmoly. Yeah. It, you nailed, well, perfect. it was a good. Yeah. It was a, I think we all sit there and go, OK, what can I you know, what are the words? What's that key catchphrase that's going to, you know, the Nike just do it. I got to come up with something, but it's got to have alcohol in the name. And then you're thinking you see bamboozled. It's like, damn it. How did I miss that? One? <laughs> that was gold. When I thought of that, Jeff, it was like I was going to write the book regardless. I didn't care how terrible the book was. I was going to write the book based on the strength of that name alone because I just said that yeah. name had to be out there. The the name Bamboozled is everything because I bought everything. I, I bought into the lies of alcohol. You know, mm -hmm. and, 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 and this is not why you're here today. But, you know, well, just as a thing, everything – there was a time when I didn't believe I needed alcohol to have fun. There was a time when I had fun with that alcohol, but someone, and I think I can remember the party. Someone came up to me and said, no, 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 Jeff, you're not having fun. You think you're <laughs> here. If you just, uh, you know, drink this and I'm not talking diet Pepsi, drink this Budweiser, then you'll have fun. It's like, Oh, I didn't realize how stupid am I? I wasn't having fun right now. I, you know, I, I was so wrong. Society tells me that every commercial tells me that. Every um, TV show, movie, they end up at the bar and everyone's, and then even my own actions, I started, oh, they must be right. So I started drinking and then I, then I even started to convince myself. So I'm as guilty as the commercials or society, but everything in me, in my world told me, I, it bamboozled me and told me, no, no, you, you, you were wrong. You're not having fun. You think you are, but you can't have fun with that alcohol. And I believe Absolutely. That. Yeah, that's the thing, well, the Jeff. And it was like, here. go yeah. ahead, finish your thought. No, you're good. You're good. Go for it. No, no, no. You had a good one. I want to hear it. Well, I was just going to say, you're so right because we learn it as little kids. And I know we're going to talk about it tomorrow with Peggy, but it, we're, we are, we are socially engineered from being kids, five, six, seven years old to exactly what you're saying. 
that alcohol equals fun and without it, we can't have it. And then what happens is as we drink it and as we make it a daily part of our life, that actually becomes the truth because we physiologically change our ability to have fun without it. And we'll talk that's more a, about it tomorrow, but that's, that's exactly huge. the truth. Yeah. And, and, and more importantly than that, and maybe this is uh, be here for tomorrow, you are going to provide the answer of how to do that, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I've done we'll that, but I don't know exactly if I know if you said, how did you do it? Well, for me, it's a whole bunch of things and it evolved. But, you know, we're all looking for the magic pill that, mm -hmm. you know, Ken's going to tell me how to and I can flick the switch. Which is the miracle? Absolutely. But what I wanted to, to, you know, why, why I wanted to bring you on. I, I, I saw some of your posts. You're, you're on a lot of, lot of um, uh, podcasts, and you're kind of floating around on the circuit. But um, my, my problem with alcohol is that I do, I do two things, or I've looked at it wrong for two things. One, I gave it credit for all the good things that it probably didn't deserve credit for. Right. I, I, the, um, the, the game the other night, uh, tailgating was fun because of alcohol. I gave it credit for, for stuff it didn't deserve for a long time. And it took the credit and said, Hey, remember me, I'm your buddy. I I'm the one that got you through that. We had a good time because of me. So let's buy some more of me. I wrongly gave it credit for stuff. And I also, I wrongly didn't give it the blame that it deserved in my life because it, it, there was uh, the problems without alcohol weren't the alcohol's fault. It was, it was me misusing it. So right. I gave it, I gave it credit didn't deserve and I didn't give it blame that it deserved, but you had mentioned something when we were talking that is alcohol really the problem. So my problem, you know, the problems that I associate with alcohol that um, I'm not where I want to be work-wise uh, my career is because of alcohol. My my family situation is because of alcohol. And you you said something and you talked about a triangle that when I drew it, you said, no, it's upside down. You're doing it wrong. But that you, we blame the alcohol, but there are other reasons. There are other reasons maybe more pressing and that alcohol, we're giving it, we're blaming it when the blame could go other places. So I'm opening up to you. So I I would have started this conversation with saying, sure, alcohol is the reason my marriage didn't go, my family didn't go, my work didn't go, my my multiple DUIs happened, all the bad that happened in my life, and I'm making up hypotheticals, were because of alcohol. And you kind of hinted, let's look a little beyond that. Yeah, yeah. And it goes back, Jeff, to the, what we were talking about earlier about men not being open. The fact that we're in this circuit, to your point earlier, in regards to the sobriety movement, if you will. And if you look at the percentage of men versus women, it's probably 20% men and 80% women. And of the question what? Is, is because the, the leaders, if you look at the people okay. that have podcasts and they're talking about sobriety and they've written books about sobriety, the minority are men. Or if you look at the people who are in the groups, the minority of men, women are in this thing completely. Now, the part of that reason is that women just naturally, or if you, you want to go back to society and, and um, anthropology, if you will, are, are naturally more open. They're more open about their feelings. They're more open about who they are. They're more intrinsic, if you will, of admitting that they're not perfect. Whereas a man, and especially when to talk about a manly man, we push our feelings down. We don't want to talk about it. And the thing that alcohol does, and this is what where it's going to sound weird because it's going to sound like I'm kind of talking out of both sides of my mouth. But if you follow me here, it, it, I'll, I'll explain exactly how it works. Alcohol allows us to cover our, our feelings, cover the things that are bad, cover the issue. So if you're having a problem at work, instead of dealing with that problem at work, you drink. If you're having a problem with your marriage, instead of dealing with that problem with your marriage, you drink. If you're having a problem with kids, instead of understanding what you're doing wrong with your kids, you drink. So when I say is alcohol really the problem, it kind of is and it kind of isn't. And the reason I say it is and isn't because of this. The alcohol isn't the problem with your marriage. It's not the problem with your kids. It's not the problem with your job. But what alcohol does and why men lean into it so much and often are very afraid to let it go, it allows you to cover. What do men do better than any, anything else? 
we don't talk about our feelings. We act like everything is okay. We stump our toe and we don't want to show a grimace. We're like, we're a manly man. So we're not going to talk about how we feel. We're not going to talk about our anxiety when we get around certain people. We just rather drink a beer and not talk as opposed to really say, okay, what is this anxious feeling I'm having and why is it and how do I improve it? Well, so it's, what it's, I, just, just so you know where I come from, you know, I played football my, my whole life. It was, you, I was, you, I was, it was beaten into me. You never tell the coach, Hey, I'm struggling with this guy. I yeah. I'm, he's beating me. I'm, I need help because you're on the bench right then. You're going to lose your job. Someone you're, you're a failure at that point. You just need to try. You would never ask for help. Th that was beaten into me. If, if your finger is hurt, you never let the other, your opponent exactly. know that you're hurt. You hide it in. And, and the same thing I, um, well, I'll just flat out say it. I haven't gone public with this, but my marriage, you know, the end of this year, sobriety was a key to my marriage ending because I, I had, I suddenly had to face feelings that I drank down for a long, long time. And when exactly. I took alcohol away, suddenly I was sitting there and this thing, you know, these, these feelings came in. I, I don't want to deal with them, but suddenly I, you know, Ken's telling me I need to stop drinking. I took away the thing that I was able to, I, I had to face them. Yeah. You, and it was I tough. allow you to push it down for so long so you can just get through it. And that's what guys do. So when we talk about the inverted triangle is that alcohol and it's an upside down triangle like this. If I had the book, I would show you, but it's an upside down triangle with the bottom, the base being alcohol. So this, mm -hmm. because as long as you have alcohol as your base, it doesn't allow you to do the work to fix everything else. So your marriage, your relationships, your career, everything else is on top of the alcohol. And if you put alcohol at the bottom and you get that under control, then you're able to do the work to build the blocks of your triangle and build the wellness of the breath of your alcohol. But as soon as you take that control of alcohol away and you go back to drinking, your entire pyramid implodes upon itself. And you're not able to truly have an effective, open, honest marriage if you continue to drink consistently and heavy. You're not able to be a great father or parent to your kids. You're not able to deal with your job because you're using alcohol to cope with all that and to just not see all of that. And that but is how the end that is. Works. I want that because now I have an excuse. It's not me being weak. Yeah. It's not me being it's the alcohol. Blame it. So I'm not the I'm not the weak link here. It's alcohol's fault. I don't have to face it takes the blame off of me a little bit. Yep. That, I mean, a, a, a lot of it for a lot of guys, right? You know, because they don't, they just don't, you, the hard work takes a lot of internal emotion that a lot of men are not willing to go through. And to your point about being in the marriage and just saying, instead of having this difficult conversation with my wife, I'm just going to drink and we're just going to like act like it never happened then you don't have to worry about it. But once you take it away, it is uncomfortable. And that's right. some part of why sometimes people go back to drinking because once they start to see that uncomfort, they're not willing or open to do it because it is not, there's a period that is really, really tough. It's, it's, it's interesting because I, I see that um, when I look at doing the work, what I see uh, is the work. I don't yes. see the end result and the work is scares me more than my what my drinking okay i can deal with a hangover it'll go away i i the kids are going to be pissed at me and she's going to be giving me that look you know what i faced that before i've done mm -hmm. it's it's a little bit of a comfort zone it's like taking if all i see is the work i lose result i lose focus on what the result could be at the top of the upside down triangle yeah it's the lesser yeah. of two evils I don't want to face this crap. I don't want to have to sit down and have these talks. It's it's uh, it's easier for me just to deal with a hangover and a pissed off boss. I've dealt with that before. Exactly. To your point, it's a less of two evils. It's, it's the devil that you know versus the devil that you don't know. And I'm right. just going to be straight up with people. And I and I I don't. I've never been someone to sugarcoat it. It's not an overnight thing. Like you may quit drinking, and you're thinking a year from now your life is going to be perfect. It doesn't work that way. It, you were drinking or have been drinking and you were neglecting or not addressing these feelings for 10, 15, 20 years. 
do you think you're going to be fix all of that in a year? It's not, you're not, but it's going to take, it could take one year, two years, three years, four years. I tell people my anxiety where I had anxiety around certain groups and crowds. I didn't get over that anxiety, uh, Jeff, and I think it was faster for you, but it took about three years after I stopped drinking for me to completely get to a place in which I felt com 100% comfortable. Um, but the reality is if you don't quit drinking, you'll never get there. But I try to tell people you're not, it's not going to happen overnight. And you got to recognize that because I still saw alcohol was the reason that I wasn't where I was in my career. I saw mm -hmm. alcohol as the reason where my marriage wasn't where I wanted to be my relation. You know, I saw alcohol. So magically take it away. Everything's going to just, it's going to be pr my world. All I got to do is take that beer out of my, my life. And suddenly life is perfect. And I sat yeah. there going, Hey, Ken, uh, uh, <laughs> where, where is it? You know, the, 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 my lotto ticket, I lost again last night. You told me everything was, you know, get rid of the booze and everything's going to be fine. Uh, I, I, I didn't even hit one number. And that's the thing. But, Not that fast at all. I was going to say it takes some time, 100%. But the, the one thing where I have to get to the point of, and I got to that point, I, I, I guess I'm playing point counterpoint with you just because I've taken myself back three years ago when I was mm -hmm. at that point. But what I learned is taking the alcohol away didn't fix everything, but what it did allow was me to be able to fix everything exactly. it, because I couldn't, I couldn't do it when I was drinking. I couldn't. I couldn't get to the problem to properly process it. I couldn't have the conversations. I couldn't have even the internal, the thoughts, you know, with myself, the discussions with myself to get to what I wanted. So alcohol was essentially, like you said, it was, it was a clog at the bottom of that triangle that kept me from even getting to the problem. So when I took that away, there was a whole bunch of crap, but at least I could put my hands on the crap. And you start building on top of it. So it's almost like sobriety or alcohol consciousness, as I call it, is the base of your inverted triangle. And then once you have that base where you know you have that under control, you put the other building blocks on top of it and you're able to build something. Build. I always say alcohol, the, the being sober or being alcohol conscious allows you to build the very best version of yourself. You may be successful with alcohol and still living a good life, but you will never, in my personal opinion, because of the effects that alcohol has on you physiologically, um, as you age, you will never be the very best version of yourself. And by giving it up, you give yourself a chance to deal with that. So our, our, our um, and I'm not blaming any programs or whatever, but everything that we see on Instagram or TV is all take away, you know, the alcohol to fix your problems. Mm-hmm. Is that a, a misconception? They, they got to be honest. It doesn't fix all your problems. Like, and I think you said it immaculately well, Jeff. It gives you the ability to then address your problems and fix your problems. But it doesn't fix your problems. I, I, I'm never sugarcoat stuff for people. Uh, I never try to make it feel like it's a get rich quick scheme. However, and this is I always use the quote by Bill Gates because it's the truth. People under overestimate what they can do in a year because they think in a year, oh, they're going to be a different person. Maybe, but probably not. But they underestimate what they can do in 10 years. And giving up Great. alcohol Great is a 10-year thing. It is you want to create an immaculate life 10 years from now that you would have never had happen if you keep drinking. Because when you keep drinking, the thing I, I always call, I call alcohol the great governor of life. A governor as in a governor in a car, a vehicle, that it, a UPS truck can only go 60 miles per hour. I don't care how much you press that gas, whatever. That is what alcohol does to your life. And you will never reach heights of emotional ability, of relationships, of just a number of things as long as you keep drinking. And only by taking it off do you then give yourself the chance to see something amazing. I had a, I had a guy I was working with a couple of years ago and he, um, uh, he, he was losing his family. He was losing, it was losing everything. Mm -hmm. And he, he wanted, he, he wanted all of it fixed. And we talked about not drinking. We got him through the first week. We worked on how to, you know, distract and give yourself new whatever. 
And after a week, he was he was very frustrated because his his wife hadn't taken it back, his kids didn't take it back, his job was still off. <laughs> it's like you, you can't, you're not going to get you're you're overestimating your goals. And even like you know, and I'm not a marriage counselor, but I I said your goal is maybe do something where after the first week or so, she'll say. Even for a brief second, he wasn't the complete asshole that he's always been. Just mm -hmm. go for a really, really small baby step is doable. But he wanted to fix everything in a week. And he 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 took away alcohol and all of it. And he got frustrated and went back to drinking. And see, I think it's those that. expectations because we see the commercial coming out of um, the person goes into rehab, which I did six days, a six day stint in rehab. That no one put those those steaming hot coals on my back and invited me to go zip lining and doing all these and having a chef laying by my sauna preparing me my meals like the commercial showed. I had yeah. styrofoam cups. They stuck my my shoelaces out of my you know everything. My rehab was not quite what they were talking about. But in the commercial, people walk out of rehab and and the family is standing outside. The boss is there with a brand new contract with a signing bonus to welcome you back. The the kids are there. Welcome home, daddy. And uh, by the way, here's a brand new car. You know, th that those, that isn't, that isn't the case. But what scares me is telling someone the truth because, because we have to quit drinking. If it's a, it, 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 if we have a problem with alcohol, step one, you got to get it out of your life. You got to take back control of your life. But I don't want to scare someone. If you told me, oh, I had to have hope that there was greener pastures by quitting drinking. If you, right. if you said, Jeff, but you're light, it's still going to, you got all this. Then I, I might have, I might have said, wow, Ken, too much work. I'll stick in this uh, hell hole that I'm in because I couldn't look past the bottom of the triangle. Right. It be 10 years. Yeah. That's tough. And I, I'm with you. I, and the only thing I tell people, though, Jeff, is like, hey, if you don't do this, if you don't address it now, it's only going to get worse. Like you think it's bad now. You right. stay on the road that you're on and it's going to get exponentially worse. And that's why. So for me, I so it's very interesting. You talk about the addiction, uh, the addicted population, because I tell people to your point, you're not a marriage counselor. I don't consider myself an addiction coach. So if you are someone that has a serious dependent relationship with alcohol in which you need alcohol or you need to go to rehab or things of nature, I often say I am not the person for you because I was not there. I'm not able to speak to you in that manner. But what I can speak to you, if you feel like you drink a little bit more than you should and you know that this isn't really serving you and was I on my way to that? Absolutely. Maybe yeah. three to five years down the road, I would have. And right in that situation where I may have needed to go to rehab, I was just fortunate enough to recognize it before it became a problem. But if people are like, oh, well, I don't want to do it because you're telling me that it's going to take three to five years. Guess what? Three to five years is going to pass regardless. So yeah. you're going to decide, are you going to be in a much better place three to five years from now, having done the hard work? Or you're going to be in a much worse place from now, three to five years, having not done the work. And that's the choice you have to make. Yeah, and I, I I wish you had been um I wish you could be there for a lot of people because even just you know, we're at the beginning of January and January one, I'm quitting drinking. Mm -hmm. And people wake up January first with no no vision of what it is, of what to focus on, because the only thing they see is uh you know, I, I don't want her mad at me tonight. I don't want the kids mad, I don't want to be I don't want a DUI. Where, where people set their goals or their whys or why they want to do this on tonight. Well, that's going to be gone by five o'clock this evening. I'll forget about that. It's almost, I, I want to, they talk about it in some of the, you know, I, I'm a, this naked mind went through that program. They talk about the pause where before you even quit, let's learn about this. Let's just don't worry about drinking tonight. And I'm not saying you got to, I'm not saying go out and hit the road and do this. I, if you've, if you want to quit, go for it. I'm not saying not to do it, but I'm saying what's more important is to let's talk about what our goals are and what our expectations are. Because if I don't have a, a plan, you know, if I, if I say I'm going to get up tomorrow and get in shape, the first I go out and run and after 200 yards, I'm wheezing 
I'm going to quit because it's like, wait a minute, I'm running. Why? I I can't I can't do a marathon. I just went out. I barely made 200 yards. I had to understand what what was what that path is going to be and what the time frame to get in shape. Same thing with alcohol, with quitting. If if I wake up without the realistic understanding of what it's going to give me and what I'm willing to give it and what I can expect to get and what I can expect to give, I won't stay with it. Yep. So having that period is important. That prep time, you know, you, I, I didn't go into a single football game without a game plan. We studied our opponent. We looked for what their strengths, what, what do you think they're going to do against me? What plays do I think? So I got to anticipate all that stuff. That was the only way I had a chance. Yeah, it gives you the best chance of success. You did that because if you hadn't done that, you would put yourself at the whim of the game to be successful or the whim of the football guys, if you would, will. Right. So, I mean, I, you, you hit the nail on the head. So I, I have this strategy called the meds, M-E-D-S, which is kind of my personal strategy. We'll talk more about it on Thursday, the how to quit. But the M stands for mechanical re-engineering. And what that means is that you spend time exactly the same way Annie Grace says, learning about alcohol, learning about how it affects you, doing reading, understanding what are the things that could happen that you need to be thinking about, you need to be considering. And as you just said, don't quit drinking during that time. It's better almost if you don't, because as you're learning about it, you're educating yourself, you're understanding, oh man, so that's the reason I wake up at two o'clock in the morning and can't go back to sleep. I thought it was just because I ate too much earlier, but you're telling me it's because alcohol is producing dinorphins that are going against my endorphins that are raising my cognitive level at three o'clock when it shouldn't. Let me see if that's happening to me. So while you're drinking and you're, you're actually going through this, then you're seeing this is real. All the science that they're saying of how alcohol affects you, how I get mad in certain situations when I'm not drink, when I am drinking versus when I don't, it's real. So then you can learn the strategies to to come against it as opposed to just trying to do it on your own. Because I think personally, in a fit, in a relationship standpoint, you and your partner need to be on the same page. Yeah. Because if you say I'm going to quit without her or him being on the same page as you, it's going to be a lot more difficult. So there's 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 two people that are going to hear this. There's going to be the person that is wanting to quit, realizing that alcohol's taken control of their lives and they they want it back. But there's also the person that's maybe got six months, a year, to, or more. I don't know, and is realizing, hey, I'm still I'm still at the bottom of this triangle, mm -hmm. and, and and I've taken alcohol out, but I'm not I'm not branching and growing. Yeah. So I, I I don't know. I'd love to hear. I, I want to know what your your thoughts are on that. What are the things that are holding us back, even if we knock out alcohol from going forward? Is that yeah. even part of? So my philosophy to, uh, you're, is perfect to what you said, Jeff, because it leads into the, the entire rest of the meds. So the first is the mechanical reengineering, which you re-educate yourself on alcohol or just educate yourself on alcohol. Most people don't even know what alcohol is really doing to them. That's part of what bamboozled is for. It's not to judge you. It's not, it's not even honestly, Jeff, it's not even to tell you to stop drinking. That's not what bamboozled, the point of bamboozled. The point of bamboozled is to give you the information that everyone needs to be aware of, of what the trade-off is that you're making when you're drinking. So if you decide to be alcohol conscious, it's very comparable to being health conscious. It doesn't mean you're, you're an addicted if you got a main problem. It means that you are no longer drinking alcohol because you understand just like you don't eat fried chicken or you're not eating sugary drinks because you're health conscious about what it does to you. So when I talk about the meds and how it can help you is you start with learning about it. And then next is E stands for exercise commitment. My personal belief, in, and it goes to part of what your education is, when you stop drinking, one of the things that you have more of than you ever recognized you had before is time. I mean, how many of us stop drinking? And you're like, holy shit, like, where yeah. did all this time come from all of a sudden? And so I said a lot of, now what? Yes, exactly. What do I do now what? 
you got to feel that time, right? So exercise is a great way. So it's a double entendre with exercise or it's a double benefited um, activity because not only does it allow for you to feel that time that you're going to have, give you something to do because so, idle hands are the devil's playground. So if you're not, if you're sitting around with nothing to do, you might start thinking about how great drinking was and start drinking. But right. now if you're exercising, it gives you the ability to feel that time. But the other side of it is scientifically alcohol exercise, excuse me, actually decreases your cravings so that artificial dopamine spike that you were used to getting when you drink you got to figure out another way to get it exercise uh, it, it'll never be equal to that but it gives you some of that so then you're not the cravings aren't as strong so it, it allows to fill that hole and i personally believe your exterior vision of representation of, of seeing the change then is a motivator to help you keep going when of the internal change because people the exercise allows you to say all right i feel better on the inside but i don't really i don't see it as much but if you're exercising you're losing weight you're slimming down your face is slimmer people are telling you man jeff you look amazing you look 20 10 years younger that little bit of motivation is going to be like okay this is working um the d stands for diet improvement and that just is natural right if you exercise but you don't eat better, you're not going to see a change really. Like you're going to be in the, the hamster wheel of just working right. out. And, you know, so there's that. And the last point, and this is the important one. This is the most important part of the meds, in my opinion. S stands for success seeking. And what I mean by that, and the reason you need to do that and how it addresses your question earlier about the person that's a year in and still feel like they're not doing anything amazing, is I personally believe when you stop drinking, when you give yourself, I consider it a gift of sobriety, of alcohol consciousness. You're not allowing this thing to hold you back anymore. You can do amazing things because of alcohol, As I mean, because of stopping drinking. As I shared before, it's a governor. Cognitively, you're not able to do so many things, especially as you age, because uh, alcohol dampens or hampers your ability, hinders your ability to do it. When you take that away, the world is your oyster and you can achieve amazing things. So I tell people, take advantage of this gift and push yourself to do something amazing that your pre-alcohol conscious self would have never done because that in and of itself when you talk about a long-term vision and what keeps you motivated will be your reason for never going back to drinking prime example mine was to learn korean my wife is korean so i thought it'd be cool that i learned it to speak to her, her family I could have never even thought about learning Korean when I was drinking because the synapses and the ability for you to the time and, and energy and time and the, the, the cognitive mm -hmm. um, recognition that it takes for you to do that. There's just no way hangovers. No, but without drinking, my mental ability is so much quicker. So you have to push yourself. You got to have some go go. Who do you want to be? You talk about a vision. Who is this amazing person that you want, want to become? that you can create this three, four, five year vision that gives you something to work with. And that's going to keep you focused. So you'll never go back to your previous self. It's, you know, what, one of the, the, um, because when you, which I, I found when I took alcohol away, I created a void mm -hmm. and suddenly that was an emptiness. And, and the worst thing, the hardest thing was when I got home and said, Oh, oh I'm not drinking. And I sat on the couch and I just went, now what? And it was, it was, um, it, 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 I was, I probably thought more about drinking when I was not drinking than I thought about when I was drinking. So it, it, <laughs> exactly. it, it was, it was, yeah, that, that was a mess. But the other one with the exercise, I, I, um, I, I tell people, give your, giving yourself, we're still going to, especially at the beginning, I, I'm past the point of needing willpower, which is the miracle. And that's what I want people to get to. Because right now, this body is doing the work for me. I don't have to make choices anymore. Mm -hmm. I get to, I, this body's on autopilot. It doesn't even ask for alcohol anymore. So I get to just enjoy riding around in this thing and enjoying the view. I don't have to work and make the just choices at the, the mini mart. Am I going to choose that cooler or am I going to choose the cooler with the Diet Pepsi in it? I don't have to make those choices anymore. So the hard work is done, but mm -hmm. it's it's giving yourself, there's still willpower, unfortunately, especially at the beginning is still required. I wanted to, I, I, I want people to have to use a minimal amount so that they can get through it. And I, I, I giving yourselves a reason to not drink at the end of the day was, was the key for me. If I woke up and, and, um, 
I didn't take a shower. I didn't exercise. I didn't brush my teeth. I didn't make my bed. I didn't do whatever. I did a lousy uh, um, day of work. I didn't call the people I should call and say hi. At five o'clock, oh, I'm going to decide if I drink. Who cares? I've already, I got nothing to, I didn't, I didn't, I don't have anything to lose. My day has been completely worthless. Right. It's like if I carry an empty wallet around, some guy comes up and says, give me your, your wallet. Take it. Enjoy. Have fun. I need a new wallet. I'm not going to fight for it. So that's, that's how I, but if I put money into that a wallet all day and the guy says, give me your wallet. No, no, no. I don't want to lose this. I worked hard for this money today. We, we, I, I'm going to struggle with you. You're not taking this. That's a and, great that, and that's like the end of the day, give yourself reasons. If I did the things right, if I did extra, you know, I'm feeling five o'clock. It's like, I don't know. I just, I just busted my butt today. I don't want to lose this to drinking. I've got, it's not the, it's not the end all solution, but I got a much better chance of not drinking than if I did nothing. So exactly. it's, it's my, I give myself reasons at five o'clock to say, no, I don't want to, I, I don't want to lose this. Exactly. I love it. That, that's, I mean, that analogy, I'm, I'm going to steal that analogy, Jeff, is that okay? If that's okay, because I love yeah, it. Because as as, yeah, no, it works. So you're putting dollars in your wallet. You're putting money in that wallet. When you have a success seeker, when you have a goal that's higher than what you naturally in, and you're putting in the work and you're trying to be a better human being than you were, you're putting money in that wallet. And if you drink, someone's going to take that yeah. wallet away from you. Yeah. But so if that, there's like, nothing, nothing earned, I got nothing. And I didn't have the way I was living. I had an empty wallet. So at five mm -hmm. o'clock, well, it, I, I could say 5 a.m. at times, but that'll be another story. <laughs> yeah, how, yeah. how far down Jeff had gone. But um, no, when it was time to drink, it was like, I'm not I'm not losing anything. Yeah, I yeah, the, the wallet was empty, so I didn't fight for it. Yep. So, so it makes a difference. And then the, the thing that I tell people at, I, at my age, I, I'll just use myself as an example, that's scary for a lot of men for not addressing this. And a lot of my friends, I'm seeing it now and I'm, you know, I don't preach because that's just not my style. I'm not, I never be like, hey man, you need to stop drinking because that's just not me. Like, I feel like everyone has their own, you got to do your own path, right? But I will say it does scare me because I'm 42 years old and I have a lot of friends now who are in my age bracket as well. And if you drink consistently for a 15 to 19 year period, and for a lot of people that falls between the age of 35 to 45, you put yourself at risk of being an alcoholic. That's just the reality of it. Like I fear men who they, they, they're so used to living this lifestyle of not addressing their feelings and drinking at for football games, drinking on the weekend at cookouts, drinking on the weekend to go hang out with their friends that they just don't think of the damage that they're doing to their self. And I fear for some of my current friends that are continuing to drink when they get to that point, because it's like that inflection point, everything's okay. I don't know. You probably heard this happen in a lot of your groups that they say, man, Jeff, everything was all right until it wasn't anymore. And it's like almost overnight you go from being, I can handle, it, I can handle it to man. I have to drink. And that's where I fear a lot of men who are within that 35 to 45 age range are putting themselves at a great uh, disadvantage or a great um, potential um, negative uh, effect because they don't realize that this will catch up with you eventually. Yeah. It, and it, it, I'm walking proof of it. I, you know, I'm 58 and I quit, you know, coming up on three years ago is when I finally, mm -hmm. it, it, I was talking with the group this morning about why, you know, what was the event? And it was, it was, um, it wasn't a DUI. It wasn't a single event for me. It was the fact that I finally accepted it's, it's over. You're at, mm -hmm. you know, I came to, I came to a, a, not a fork in the road. I came to a, it's either left or right. You, you're done going forward. And wow. it was like, you either choose, you either choose the end if you go mm -hmm. left or you choose, but you, I didn't have an option but to choose left or right. I was I was out of of gas. I was out of excuses. I was out of convincing myself that I could keep going. I was out of tomorrow's. I just was at the end, and it was like I'm I'm a minute away from a DUI. I'm a minute away from losing everything in my life, and and I I, I just I, I was done. 
Yeah. I had, I had no other options. What do you think things began to change for you when it went from alcohol being something that you did that you enjoyed to alcohol being something that you felt like you had to do? Well, for me, a little bit different because I had, um, uh, uh, and it was all, I, I did a thing about this the other day. Alcohol was my solution for my problem, which was alcohol. Everything that I was doing, <laughs> alcohol, I used alcohol to fix the problem. It was a great, it fixed all my problems, but all my problems were because of alcohol. It was the anxiety, the uneasiness, everything. But I had um, late, mid-20s, uh, I had a, a, my first panic attack. And, mm. and life, I, I entered the world if anyone, I, I, I am magna cum laude, graduate top of my class in, in anxiety and panic attacks. It stole so much of my life. And the only thing that helped ease my anxiety was the same thing that was, I was putting it out today while I was, I was creating it for tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know, but alcohol was the only thing that worked, but it was also, I was, what I was, when I was drinking it to put out today's fire, I was just dumping kerosene on the wood. And I woke up tomorrow morning with a raging more anxiety. And I, of course, how do I put that out? More alcohol. Drink that more. was the day when I had that first panic attack, that's when alcohol became medicinal uh, versus pleasure. It was the day that it be, I became a user of alcohol, not a enjoyer of alcohol. I still enjoyed it or believed I did, mm -hmm. but it took on a whole new role. Um, yeah. And, and, uh, my life was governed by, I, I couldn't, I, Ken, I couldn't, I couldn't go grocery shopping without alcohol. Wow. I couldn't, I couldn't cross bridges without alcohol. I couldn't go up to communion at church without alcohol. I couldn't, there's no way I could go to a party unless I stood right at the door. I couldn't go in. I couldn't speak. I couldn't go on sales calls and I was a salesman. Kind of uh, the old job description of what the <laughs> Uh, as a salesman, you want to go on a sales call. One of the key points of it, you know, you have to do that. Yes. You know, 50 pounds. Okay. We can let that one slide, but the ability to go on a sales call as a set, you, you laugh and I do too. I couldn't do it. Wow. So I, I, I mean, there was a lot of sales calls at the end. People went, he has the freshest breath in the world. Well, that's because <laughs> he has 38 Altoids in his mouth trying to get away with you not smelling with what got him to even be able to come in and talk to you. That's amazing. And you said after you stopped drinking, your, your anxiety went away in a couple of weeks, right? Was it, that it was, it was, um, it was, I remember the moment and I hate sharing this, but no, I don't hate sharing it. I, I, I feel guilty sharing it because I think 80% of the people in my boat that, that drink will find total freedom from anxiety, but there are 20% that, don't and I don't know what the difference is, and I feel sorry for them because I don't. Yeah. I feel guilty that they didn't. But I was two weeks after I quit. I, I got out of rehab, um, and uh, I, I was. I, I, I was. I knew I had gotten dry, but it was like, okay, I. That's anxiety is here, and mm -hmm. I thought I'm not going to live this life anymore. I can't. I'm not going back to because alcohol worked. And I was feeling all that anxiety, the pain, and I thought, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not, I can't live this way. And I remember where I was driving on the highway two weeks after I got out, and I was in the high speed lane, and there were trucks all around me, which would have had me diving for an exit in a, a heart pounding panic. And I realized I was okay. Yeah. And it was, it, it was, it was, um, I, I thought, who the hell are you? I, I was okay. And then, then it snowballed. That success made me realize I could do it, and the success builds su success breeds success. Hundred percent, you know. And and that's one thing. Here's another another talk. We got so many things we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to finish with a question about. Don't let me forget about men. How do we do this? So that's the that's the the, the one you're going to answer. But um, part of the key for my success was when I believed I could do things and I started growing that triangle, mm -hmm. I had to do them to really believe I could do them. I had, when I believed, you know what, without alcohol, I might be able to speak in front of a crowd of, of, of eight. Mm -hmm. Well, I believed it was possible, but I had to do it before I truly believed it. And, and when I spoke that first time in front of a small group, 
my heart was pounding. I was sweating, but I did it. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know what? You didn't die. You pulled it off. It was hard. It would have been easier if you were drinking, but you know what? You did it. And it made the next time a little easier. And that's Absolutely. that success bred success. Um, you know, it's just it, it, that snowball, but I had to do, I had to take action. I had to turn a belief or a hope or a plan or, you know, the start of, I want this triangle to grow. I had to take steps because I had to believe inside. I could believe up here that it was possible. Yeah. But my inside is going, yeah, but you can't do that. That's, that's, that works for Ken, not for Jeff. Yeah, that's it. I had to prove to myself that I could do it and that success built success. But the last question I wanted to close on, and maybe this is a whole nother topic, and I hope we do this a hundred times because it helps me out. But you t- you talked at the beginning about men. Er- everything we talked about doing requires me to come out of my protective shell. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 um, what what worked for me was talking to someone like you of saying, you know what, Ken, I'm struggling, man. I want to, it's Friday night. I want to drink. I I never would have done that, but the miracle happened because when I when when I talk with you, two people hear our conversation. All right. You're one of them, and I'm the other one. And when you ask, when we start talking, and you ask me a question about something, I'm I'm listening to myself. I'm dying to hear what comes out because I don't, I can't always hear it in here. It's, 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 I don't know what's in here. I just, this, I get results out of here, but I don't hear this stuff. And when I'm talking to you, it's like, uh, Ken asked me a good question. It's like, oh my God, I'm, I'm dying to hear what Jeff says <laughs> I'm hearing it as much as you are. And so my, my point is you're giving answers, but I'm still a dude that doesn't want to open up and tell you I need help. How do you get past that point? Yeah, it's, it, it is. Uh, I will say it's not easy. I, I'm not going to in any way say it's going to be. It's easy to convince a male to do it. But the only thing I will say is that if you want to be the best version of yourself, which sounds like a little bit of a, of, of a repeating record here, but it's just the truth. If you want to be the build the best version of yourself and honestly just live a long and amazing life. I mean, because reality and this, you know, I don't I hate to be morbid here, but women live much longer than men do. It's it's not even close. Right. Like it, it, women always live much longer than men do. And part of that's because they they're not emotionally bottled up the way men are because right. we push everything down. So I tell guys, if you really want to live an amazing life, you got to stop trying to be so hardcore, man. It's not so it's not that serious. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, Jeff, as I've gone through my alcohol journey over the last four years, I've matured. The thing that giving up the alcohol for the bottom of my triangle allowed me to do, like to your point earlier, allow me to then have the ability to emotionally look at all the other aspects of my life and improve those and build the foundation. As I've done that, I've grown as a person. I've grown as a man. I've grown as a human being. And I've had a lot of friends who are still drinking. It doesn't, they haven't grown. It doesn't allow you to grow into that same capacity. So the the friends, I lost friends, not because I didn't want to go out and drink. Well, they didn't want to come out and, and hang out with me anymore because I didn't drink. Because I, I lost them because I was emotionally growing and maturing and becoming a different person that they weren't willing to do. They Because when you drink, they just didn't have the capacity or desire to have a real man to man conversation that I think a true man has of how I feel, who I am and what really is, is, is bothering me or affects me. So I tell people, if you want to live a long life, right, a long and amazing life, you got to force yourself to do these things, because if not, you're going to die like all the, a lot of pe- men do at 55 or f- whatever because they had a heart attack because they never, ever, ever address these things. Whereas you got our counterparts on the female side that because they're open and they're more willing to talk and they talk to their female friends about how they're feeling, they're living to 70, 80, 90 years old. That's something there that we just need to address as a, as a, uh, as a sex. I naturally believe it. I, I think it's got to be, uh, I wish there was a planet fitness for recovery and no judgment zone where, you know, I would have felt, but I, 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 to tell friends what I was going through, I don't, I, there's still, I don't, I don't want to go to the, those guys that I'm supposed to be tough and strong. Yep. 
And unfortunately, no. and, that, and yeah. that 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 damn ego and pride or whatever it is has has that's that's knocked me down hard. That's mm-hmm. kept me from so much. And this, you know, the last three years, I found, I found, you know, guys like yourself that you know you get comfortable just because it, it, once that opens up. That was that's and it's hard, but that's where the freaking freedom came from. Yeah. Because like I said, when I'm telling you and talking to you about it, I'm hearing it as much as as you are. You're learning. Like to your point, you start talking. You don't know what comes out, but what comes out, it 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 ends up being how you're really feeling that you didn't even process until you were saying it in that very moment. So it takes that communication and having someone you can talk to. A lot of times for us to get right with ourselves. That's why it's so important to talk to other people yeah. regardless because it makes I, I got, you know, I have a just you can your phone has the notebook even just on where you can just talk into it. And I've mm-hmm. had times where I've done that where I've even just hit it and just said uh, um, just vented for a while. And, you know, it, and you can as soon as you're done, you can delete it. But when I read it, it's almost like, you know, hey. I have something. Uh, I I I can see what I what I just said. I it's I can look at it objectively, right? It's something right. in front of me versus in here. So you know, just little things. But well, we're gonna have you back for sure. Um, yeah, because uh, um, this is any great stuff. So I'm excited about bamboozle. So tomorrow night, um, which people are going to hear this after it's already done, but uh, on the groups, we'll hear your little more of your story. What is yeah. your, what's, what is your, how, how long have you been in control? I see the people caught up on labels and that's a whole nother. Discussion. <laughs> you I say whatever you want to yeah. sober. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. bother me. It doesn't, bother it doesn't me. change. That, that's an important thing because whether you call me an alcoholic, you call me uh, a misuser of alcohol, it doesn't change who, it doesn't change my situation. No, it's all you, can, you can label it all day long. If I drink a beer, I'm going to want a second one. And you know what have, I'm going to want after I have the second one? Third. Well, I was going to the ninth. But, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's an exponential thing. So labels, I couldn't care less. It doesn't change one thing. But how long have you been um, free? You say so, or, yeah, I would say uh, since uh, 2018. November tenth, wow. two thousand eighteen. So four was years. There, do you, was there an event? Was there something that day? Dude, it wasn't. Man, it was pretty what they call spontaneous, um, spont- spontaneous sobriety in the sense yeah. that my wife and I went out. Now I'll, I'll share the story on on Thursday because it is very yeah. important. But it related to the fact that I wasn't successful in my business and wanting to m- not go back to corporate America unless I could say I've done everything in my power to be successful. And I always knew in the back of my head, alcohol was the one thing that was probably holding me back. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause I had same thing, but it was also, I was battling cause it was the one thing that was allowing me to at least get through at least function through life. Mm. So I yeah. was that battle because it's like, okay, it's not giving me this, but at least it, I, at least I can go to the grocery store. Yeah. At least I can do enough to survive. Your story is amazing, though, Jeff, because for a lot of people, you know, they, we drink because we want to or we you think it's fun. But for you, it was it was a it was a actual medical situation. And for you to come on the other side of that is truly impressive. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. And and that's what I, the anxiety thing is. That's another one. Guys don't want to talk about panic attacks because it's like I, I don't go in the huddle with my buddies and go, hey, after the game, can I need someone to drive me home because I can't drive over that bridge on I-75 or I-70. Yeah. You know, I need, will you do that for me? And and then once you get across, I'll take the wheel from there. You, you, you're kidding. You think I'm ever going to tell anyone that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. It's gotten better, right? I think it's gotten better where men are more open to their feelings, but there's still a sect that there are people that are afraid. And, 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 and I'm just trying to push against that because I think men, we, as a, as a sex, we're slowly killing ourselves by not yeah. being willing and, and, and open to sharing our feelings with each but other. What I, what I, and it's, it, I wouldn't have believed it before, but what I got out of sharing that and opening that up is, is a hundredfold of what I thought I was going to get. And it was like, mm. I, you know, hell yeah, I'll, I'll tell anyone if this is going to, this is the reward I'm getting, I'll open up to anyone about it. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt it's, it's so worth it. it. 
but yeah. Well, thanks, buddy. Hey, stay on for a second. Um, so we will. Um, I'll have this also shared. It, 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 it will. We'll have the link in both of our uh, contact info if anyone wants to share this with someone. But Ken, amazing story, motivation, inspiration, and uh, can't wait to hear more. Absolutely. Thanks, my man. And, and bamboozled. You snagged the winning name. <laughs> Huge. It's you know, some, someone's walking time. around saying with Nike going, I came up with just do it. And I'm a gazillionaire. And, uh, and you, you, you know, that, that everyone's looking for the, the, the one and that's, that was right there. So good. I don't need the gazillion dollars, but if it gets me a fraction to gazillion, I'll, I'll yeah, take it. So just even the, the yeah. <laughs> all right, buddy, I'll talk to you in a bit. So, uh, everyone take care and we'll, we'll talk soon. Hang on, Ken. See ya.